You smell that? I smell Oscars. That's right. I smell Oscars. I'm actually going to review four movies, even though one of them's only actually a worldwide release, or at least I think one of them truly is. And I know one comes out next week, and then there's a limited release one, and then there's one movie no one's ever really heard about, it is in my local theater, and I was actually stupid enough to watch this. Um, but anyway, let's get on with that. Today I am going to review Prisoners, Rush, Battle of the Year, and Enough Said. Now I want to start off with Prisoners. Man, where do I begin? I guess I'll just start at the beginning. Okay, here's the thing with this movie. This movie is a basically about these these two dot these two dot these two little girls that are that have been taken and all that stuff. Like, or actually, let me let me go back and say this. You know, there's this family. They're meeting for Thanksgiving, and the two girls decide to go off and play with you know hang out, and eventually they end up missing. And what's interesting about that is because they really don't show them like, being missing. You, you know, they don't show the scenes with, like, they're actually taken or stuff like that. You know, it just it just happens. And that was something really interesting about this movie. This, And let me finish off with the story a little bit. And then eventually, you know, they're flipping out because they can't find him. And then they have to turn to Detective Loki. Yes, literally, Marvel's Avengers villain. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal plays Detective Loki, and he's promising, you know, I'm going to find your daughters. And here's the thing with this movie. This movie, I mean... Yes, it goes, I mean, the movie's not sparkling original, but what makes this movie its own is the way it presents itself. It's not necessarily like a, you know, a, a, a fine, like, not a fine movie, uh, like a big, huge mystery type movie. It's its own dark psychological movie, and it really involved, in the movie, it's not about necessarily trying to find the two girls. It's really about how these people are affected by this situation, and like, the, how they just lose their humanity at times. And it just brings it in on such an incredible level. This movie was so freaking awesome. This movie, literally, it's nothing, like, too big or necessarily, you know, too strong. Like, big music. It is, like, a softest tone, but in the most intense way it can be. And let me just also say this. The acting in this movie, Hugh Jackman. I smell Oscar nomination for him. I mean, I know he was nominated last last year for Les Miserables, but oh my god, he was freaking awesome in this movie. I I hope he gets nominated and possibly even win an Oscar. I he was fantastic. Jake Gyllenhaal. This isn't his first time as playing a cop. I mean, last year End of Watch, he was really good in that, and this year playing Detective Loki, he's definitely him and. Jackman are definitely up on the scale. I honestly like Jackman better than Gyllenhaal's character because Jackman had more to portray, but Gyllenhaal, nevertheless, still fantastic character. Now, Terrence Howard in this movie, he's definitely kind of more of a... He's kind of more of a quiet guy. He's kind of like the fun kind of character or whatever, but when... It gets real. He's just basically at his lowest low. He is just such a depressing guy. I mean, oh my gosh. Just this one scene when he confronts with Hugh Jackman and sees this mess. I mean, you can see it in the trailer. He's just like, have you lost your mind, basically? He's just like, oh my gosh. He's like a, he's just like that puppy that gets sad so easily in this movie. And, man, he just brings out so emotion. Viola Davis in this movie, fantastic. Maria Bella in this movie. She play, she's just, like, also like Terrence Howard, but she's like, you know, what are we going to do? I mean, she's trying to move on, but she can't at the same time. But, I mean, it really shows in two and a half hours, basically, all these characters and what they're going through and how they deal with these situations. It's not necessarily... Well, it is kind of just like Hugh Jackman a lot, but... Yeah, at other times, they do kind of get their fair shares of, like, Maria Bello's character, or Terrence Howard's character, or Viola Davis's, or even, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal. And then there's one person, the guy that they think is the lead suspect, is Paul Dano, or whatever. And I haven't seen him be... I haven't seen him this good since There Will Be Blood. He's, like, a really good kind of character. Really, He's kind of like a vulnerable... It's like a vulnerable villain at times, even though... You know, even though the story kind of makes it its own, it feels like it's not he's not exactly the villain, but in a sense he is at the same time. It feels like you don't necessarily know what to believe until you're actually going through the movie. Be like, oh, oh, oh. And this movie really is edge, like just really gripping on the edge of your seat the whole time. For a movie like this, this is probably the most intense and emotional movies I've ever seen. 
is so good. This literally probably is either one of the best, if not the best movie of the year, and for sure one of the best movies I have ever seen. Prisoners gets a solid 10. Fantastic movie. Great acting. Great script. Fantastic script at that. Fantastic directing. I don't really know the guy's name. It's like Dennis V or something like that. Dude, I want to see this guy direct more movies. I think he's got a career making. I don't know if he's made other movies. I really want to see more of his movies. This guy can direct. And also, one thing I forgot to mention, the cinematography. Roger Deakins, a fantastic cinematographer. He really knows how to get the shots. This movie's also really well edited. I never really pay attention to that. This movie's just so crisp and clear, and it's not like all over the place editing, you know? It's not like the shakiness and all that stuff. It is cl crystal clear cinematography with crystal clear, you know, crystal clear editing. I didn't say that right. This movie's fantastic. Go check this out. Go check this movie out. This is... This is not necessarily an Oscar-type movie. I mean, it is, but it's way more than that to me. And, man, I was blown away by this movie. <laughs> well, now, I just got that out of my system. Let's talk about Rush. Another movie that could possibly be an Oscar contender. Um, it's, about, it's really about this rivalry. I didn't know that at first until I actually saw the movie. I thought it was just about the biography of just this guy, basically. Apparently, it's not. It's really this rivalry between... I think his name was, like, James something. And then, uh... Nicky Lado or something like that. J no, it's James Hunt and Nicky Lado. You know, and they're in this rivalry. And what's interesting about Rush is that, um, you know, these two characters, their rivalry is actually very interesting. It's not like, oh, I hate you, I'm going to destroy you and all this stuff. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily bickering at each other. They're like, it's the way the rivalry, it's really something I've never really seen before. It's like, they're trying to best up each other, but at the same time, they're trying to be the best of what they can be. You know, and it's really interesting to kind of see that happen. And it does kind of bring on a little bit of that emotional standards to the movie, which has honestly really surprised me. And that's something that really boosted up this movie even more. Uh, Chris Hemsworth as um, James Hunt. I mean, man, this guy. I mean, you know, you see him playing Thor and he's good and all, you know. But man, I never really knew this guy had really good acting chops. I mean, he's actually really good in this movie. And then Daniel Brewer, whatever his last name is. He's the he's one of the guys that was from Inglorious Bastards that was trying to hit on that one chick or whatever. If you don't know who I'm talking about, watch the movie. Um, he was really good. He was definitely the best character in the movie. You really see a lot of him. You don't necessarily see just the James Hunt character or Chris Hemsworth's character. You really see um, Daniel Brewer's character as well and what he's really capable of. Man, this guy can act. I mean, he's really good in this movie. He was definitely probably the best part of this movie. I'm not weighing down Chris Hemsworth. He was really good in this movie, but Daniel, whatever his last name is, dude, he was freaking awesome in this movie. I'm not going to lie. And the thing, too, this movie, it's Formula One racing. And I know everyone who's seen this movie says, you know, they're not a big fan of Formula One racing, you know. But you don't have to be a fan of that type of racing to enjoy this movie. If you want to sit down and watch a good movie between these interesting rivalry, then you're going to be entertained by this movie, no matter what. And that's one thing, too, that I really liked about this movie. You know, the rivalry was something very different, something I never saw before. It was something a lot more different than from, like, The Prestige, even. I mean, that was a good rivalry movie, but it, was, it wasn't anything like that, but it was its own type of rivalry, and that was really good. There are other aspects of the movie. Olivia Wilde in this movie, she's really good in this movie. I don't know how. I mean, she's had her... I mean, she's done those certain movies in the past, but for a movie like this, man, I'm really surprised right now. I mean, I mean, from Hugh Jackman being in a movie like Prisoners, I mean, just blowing me away, and then having actors like Chris Hemsworth come from the Marvel Universe and being in a movie like this, it's really good. And plus, this movie is directed by Ron Howard, and it's kind of been like a couple years since his Dilemma flop or whatever, the one he made Dilemma, you know. Uh, I mean, he's made great movies. I mean, like Apollo 13... That's really the only one that comes off to my head right now. I remember I reviewed that movie, and I said I really liked the movie. Um, but, I mean, he, this guy's a really great director. This is probably one of my fa more favorites of his, because this, if not probably my favorite Ron Howard movie, it's a really good movie. I give this movie a 9. It's really good. I really do think... I think this could be an Oscar contender. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not so sure. But I can tell you it's a really entertaining movie. Now, I'm going to move on to... 
one of the biggest movies or messes I've ever seen in my life. Battle of the Year. Now, look, when I first saw, like, a thing poster for this movie, I thought it was going to look actually pretty interesting. And when, when I found out the premise of this movie, and literally, I found all this out once I went into the theater, sat my butt down, and just watched the movie. You know, I found out this movie was about breakdancing. Look, I have nothing against breakdancing, you know, at all. I mean, it's just, I'm not a big fan of breakdancing. I don't like it that much. And also, here's the thing. If you're going to do a breakdance movie, you got to do it right. You know what was wrong with this movie? Everything. Now, look, I honestly, what, I mean, the dances in this movie, I honestly did, could care less about this movie, no matter how cool they looked. But the thing that bugged me the most was everything else, basically. I mean, the directing of this movie, the direction it took, the script, the acting, it was all just stupid and unoriginal. Well, not necessarily unoriginal, but actually, yeah, unoriginal. I mean, it's not that interesting. It's just really not. I mean, it's that typical movie. You know, you have this one coach. He's like probably like an alcoholic, and they're trying to see if they can become a unit. We get that, okay? Oh, my gosh. This movie... This movie sucks. And, I mean, let's face it. You got um, the one character from Lost. I don't know his name, but, man, what is he doing in this movie? What What's he doing? I don't know. Chris Brown's in this movie... I'm not hating on him for the Rihanna thing. I'm just, I just don't like him in general. And Josh Peck in this movie, I mean, from Red Dawn, I mean, he wasn't bad in Red Dawn, but uh, he probably, he definitely wasn't a strong character at all. He's just kind of thrown in there with Chris, Chris Hemsworth in that movie. But this one, and he's supposed to kind of be this comic relief. No, 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 not at all. And then there's other characters you could care less about. And there's nothing good about this movie at all. I don't care about the dancing. Look, I will say this. You'll probably like the dancing in this movie, but honestly, I hated this movie. <sighs> I'm going to give this movie a zero. Flat out, just horrible. It's a zero. It is horrible. Probably, it might be my number one worst movie of the year. I don't know yet. There's, we, there's been some really bad movies this year, and this is for sure probably one of the worst. Ugh. God awful, God awful. Now let's go on to the much better side of this move of this week, because really there have been some fantastic movies that I've seen this weekend, and this is also one of them. Enough said, starring uh, the late James Gandolfini and Julia Louis Dreyfus, who we all remember from Seinfeld, and I really love that show, by the way. Um, you know, and it's like. You know, the story, it's like this romantic comedy, you know, between James Gandolfini and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And, you know, they're in this big, huge mine and all this stuff. It's kind of like a typical romantic comedy, but kind of making it its own. Especially the fact that this probably is James Gandolfini's last performance, I think. I don't think he's going to be in another movie after this. Well, any other movie that he worked on before he died, but you know, you know what I mean. I think this is the last performance. I honestly really felt sad, especially in the dramatic scenes, how, you know, I'm like... Because I really felt attached to the character of James Gandolfini and how people always say, not comparing him to when he was on The Sopranos, but, like, really kind of like this soft giant looking... Like, this really soft, big giant. And that's really kind of how he is in this movie. He's really witty and all that. And, you know, he's basically who he is in real life. He was basically portraying himself in this movie, and he is so great in this movie. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, I know that, you know, she's always been in, like, comedy. She's been in, like, Seinfeld and then other sitcoms and all that stuff. I never thought she could do a movie like this, and yet, at the same time, she manages to keep the comedy and the drama work so well, and I really like that a lot about this movie. And James Gandolfini and Julia Louis-Dreyfus were just really good in this movie. They definitely clicked. I definitely felt sparks. And let me, t let me tell you all this. I'm not a big fan of romantic comedies at all. But when you have a movie like this come along and actually entertains me, you know, and that uh, on a comedy aspect and then a drama aspect, dude, I don't know what's wrong with me. Someone might have to take me to the hospital or something. Because this movie was really good. I really liked this movie. Now, there are some things in this movie that were basically kind of romantic comedy-ish, and you know, you already knew that. And it, 
a couple times the drama seems kind of like, you know, it's going to be thrown in there. You kind of, you kind of can't predict it. But still, nevertheless, this movie was so great. I loved this movie. Uh, I didn't love it as much as Rush, and definitely not as much as Prisoners, but still, I really love this movie. I'm going to give this movie an 8. It's, it's a really great, heartwarming film. James Gandolfini, you will be missed. You're a great actor, and I loved you for that, man. You're such a great talent, and we'll really miss you. Um, well, that's all I have to say for this weekend. You know, a fantastic, like, an incredible movie. Prisoners and Rush being like a really, really entertaining Formula One race movie. Battle of the Year being probably one of the worst movies ever. And then going back to Enough Said, probably being one of the best romantic comedies I've ever seen. Even though I hate romantic comedies, but that's just me. I don't know how I did, but I did. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends, and hopefully I will see you sometime next week when... I don't know what comes out next week. Oh, yes, yeah, Clyde with a Chance of Meatballs 2. Rush actually comes out next week, but I'll probably just do Clyde with a Chance of Meatballs 2. See you next week. Bye.